a budget meeting with Dan Rooney and Steve Hardy. Any idea how long that'll be? Uh, he should be back shortly. How'd your surgery go? Very well. Rick was wonderful. You. No kidding. You know, Monica, I'd never expect you to say anything less than glowing about Dr. Rick Weber. Are you counting up to ten? I've been very appreciative of your restraint lately in that kind of remark. We aim to please. I really hoped our last little talk put an end to it. Obviously, it didn't. I really hate those remarks about Rick and my feelings for him, Tracy. So go back to that restraint. Sure, if it's important to you. Although I don't know why you're so concerned if Alan has really gotten over that old devil jealousy of his. This has nothing to do with Alan. Oh, really? I thought everything in your life revolved around my brother. It does. I don't like your barbs. And if you're going to join us for dinner tomorrow night, I certainly don't want to hear them in front of Leslie. Monica, I promise to be the very soul of discretion. And besides, you should know me better to even think that I would bring something up in front of Leslie. If I didn't know you, Tracy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Besides, it certainly can't be that Leslie's jealous. You've always described their marriage to me as perfect. Now, perfect is flawless, and jealousy is a flaw. And I didn't say Leslie was jealous. She doesn't know you, Tracy, and she may not quite understand what you consider humor. I'll be good as good. All demure smiles and white gloves, if I come at all. Oh, yes, I talked to Leslie about it, inviting Mitch Williams. And? And she said it was all right, so you have my permission to ask him. I already did. What? Why not? Could you? What would you have done if Leslie said she didn't want him there? We would have worked it out. We? How? Well, now, let me see. You are a real good friend of Rick's. So you could talk to Rick, Rick could talk to Leslie, and Leslie could change her mind. I was just about to go get a cup of tea. Do you want to come? No. I want a promise that you are going to behave yourself tomorrow night. Could I deny you anything? I mean it, Tracy. No snide remarks, no innuendos, and no embarrassing subjects. How about I put it in writing? Will that ease your mind, Monica? Not necessary. You know, Monica, you're acting as if you've never given a dinner party before. What is it particularly that's making you so edgy? I'm not edgy, Tracy. I would like a nice, quiet evening. That's what I want. Understand? I understand. Tell Alan I'm going to stop by this again. I will, and while we are on the subject of your old pal, Gail... We weren't. We are now. I heard via the hospital grapevine, she's seeing a shrink. True? sister-in-law's dreary little dinner party. I'm talking about the governor's ball in January. What? Well, of course I've been invited. The invitation just arrived this morning, and I want you on my arm. Of course I'm serious, Mitch. I'm always serious when I talk to you. I should be getting on my way home now. I'll get Tommy in from outside and have him ready for dinner by the time you let me see get home. The way Tommy attacked that Thanksgiving meal, I, I would think uh, he'd never be late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he isn't, believe me. But Tommy would just as soon play football rather than wash his face and hands. 
Oh, nice to see you again, dear. Thank you, Anne. I hope we see each other soon. Oh, me too. And thank you for taking care of my nurse. Oh, it was fun, really. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. What a refreshing young woman she is. <laughs> Will she be visiting with you long? Well, I am trying to persuade her to stay on in Port Charles for a while, anyway. Oh, I would love to see her go back into nursing eventually. Well, doesn't she want to? I don't know. I keep thinking that if I expose her to the hospital enough, that maybe it will weaken her resistance. <laughs> well, what, why doesn't she want to? Oh, there are a lot of reasons. She uh, spent so much time nursing her father these past two years. She really hasn't had any time for herself. Well, what does she want to do? I don't think she knows yet. And she is a very cautious person. I mean, she's not the kind of girl who will jump into something and then six months later change her mind. Uh -huh. Very unique attitude. Oh, yes, days. very unique. She is so special. And she really has been since the day she was born. Mm. Hello, ladies. Mama. Well, you arrived just in time. I did? Yes. What for? Uh -huh. I wanted well, to sit and talk to Gail because <laughs> I have to get back to work and finish some papers and see if I can get Steve out of the office so we don't get home too late. Nice talking to you. Good night. Like, hey, have a nice evening. Thank you. The same for both of you. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. See you later. Mm -hmm. Scotty told me to be here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just decided to take a break after my, uh, session with Peter today. Well, how's it going? Well, it, it's, uh, not easy to dig up a lot of emotions that you thought were over with and long since dead and then find that they're still breathing at the surface. <laughs> yeah, no. I guess the thing I have to do next with Peter's help is just to look at those emotions and examine them and accept the implications and then file them away for good this time. It's a neat trick. Necessary. Yeah, what happens to uh, emotions you can't seem to control? No matter how hard you try to file them neatly away, you just can't seem to do it. Do you have something specific in mind? Uh, specific? No. No, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. How's it? Haven't you forgot something? What? You taken off your coat yet. Oh, yeah, how about that, Dan? What's up? Up. Yeah, come on. Now. I've known something was bothering you all the time we were shopping. You weren't your usual bright and cheerful self. And you didn't talk to everybody in the market as though they were all your friends. Well, I'll be fine, Dan. I think I'll feel better once I go upstairs and change and try and freshen up a little bit. You meant what I said, Bobby. Jesse thinks the world of you. As for me, I hope you know that I feel the same way. What I'm trying to say to you, Bobby, is that I'm here. That if there's anything I can do to help, anything at all, I'll be offended if you don't come to me, because that's what friends are for. Dan, you're gonna make me cry if you keep this up. It was not my intention, believe me. It's just that I never had people like you and Jesse to turn to before, you know? Well, now you do. Maybe if I'd had them all my life, things would have been different for me. Well, from where I sit, you're doing okay. There aren't very many young women I know with your drive and determination. You know exactly who you are and what you want. And that's a terrific accomplishment, believe me. Yeah, well, it wasn't always that way. I've been through some pretty tough times, too. Who hasn't? It's all part of it, Bobby. Times when I didn't know who I was or what I wanted. Take a tip. Don't look back. You landed on your feet, and you're at the top of the heap. And that's what counts. Well, I got dinner started. Well, and two hungry people waiting for it. Oh, and I am going up to change. I won't be long. All right. Oh, I'll get that. Hello? Hello, 
Jesse, it's Dory. I wanted you to know that I've completed plans for my trip to England. Everything's in order, so I will be taking my leave. Oh, Dory, that's wonderful. I'm so glad for you. I'll make it official tomorrow. I'll put it on the schedule. Well, I will keep you, but the travel agent just called, so I, I thought you should know. Oh, well, thanks so much for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. That was Dory. She's going to England to visit uh, Katie and Mark. Wish I were going with her. Then maybe England wouldn't be far enough. I wish I knew what was bothering her. That makes two. I tried to get through to her. Without success so far. Any ideas? No, not really. Think it'd still be Scotty? Gee, I don't think so. Dan, she's a very bright girl. She knows that Laura comes first in Scotty's affections now. Did she ever say anything about that uh, honest talk she and Scotty had that night? No. She didn't have to, though. I saw the results. The very next day, everything was different between them. And, uh... Did you ever tell her about our honest talk where I profess my honorable intention? <laughs> I most certainly did not. Where are you going? Check on dinner. I'll go with you. Two heads are better than one. No, 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 no. Why don't you uh, stay here and help Bobby set the table? I've been cooking for a good many years alone and I've never had any complaints. It's going to be the largest fundraising Christmas party Port Charles has ever seen. And you've made arrangements to accommodate a cocktail party this size? You bet. The Harbor Towers has promised to give me the main ballroom. Give? Yeah. Free of charge. I'm impressed. I thought I'd combine it with a big tree and lots of presents, but this is the really genius part. What do you think about orphans and underprivileged children? I thought we'd pack the place with them, and in the true spirit of Christmas giving, share with those less fortunate. I'm pleased to hear you say something like that, Tracy. You don't think it'll bother Monica, do you? Why would it? Well, you know, it might remind her of her background and being raised in that awful orphanage. Tracy, being an orphan isn't a punishable offense. Why would she even give it a thought? I don't know. She just gets sensitive about things sometimes. Yes, she can be, but in this particular instance, I'm sure she'd be touched to be able to help. I can almost guarantee that as a reaction. Great. I have an idea. Hmm? Why doesn't she take over that part of the program? Contact the orphanages, arrange for the transportation? I'm sure she'd be delighted if she has the time. She's the only authority I know on the subject, certainly the first one in our family. That's... Guess what? What? We have company for dinner. Wow. <laughs> Lee is going to be working late tonight, so I persuaded her to join us. If I am not intruding. Intruding? Madam, you've got a date and there's no backing out of it. I'm glad you're joining us, Gail. You can give me some help at my Christmas party. Well, of course, Tracy, if I can. I have this marvelous idea. Alan and I were just discussing Tracy, it. Tracy, why and don't, why, why don't we save all of this for dinner conversation? I'm starving. So am I. Oh, Tracy, uh, did you actually get an acceptance from Mitch Williams? Yes. He said he'd let me know. Let you know? It doesn't say yes. It does to me. He'll be there. So you can, uh, print his name on the name cards. If you're having me. Ladies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>